Welcome, public inventors. This is a collaboration done by me, Kishan Patel, and Robert L. Reed about an optical linear sensor. First, the technical details of the sensor will be described, followed by an example of the application of the sensor at the end of the video. So this is the 3D CAD model of the optical linear sensor. It's a basic design for proof of concept. We have our tubing here along with our dowel slash plunger. We have two holders and we have the specially catted holster which holds the CDS cell and the LED. So this is a cross-sectional view of the optical linear sensor. You can get a better feel for what's on the inside of the black tubing. Uh, here sits the LED and the CDS cell. Uh, we have the white tipped plunger here which goes back and forth um, through this opening hole. The reason why we had uh, two circular discs here is to prevent uh, wobble um, sideways and so it always stays perpendicular um, to this axis and also parallel to this one. Uh, so the basic idea is that when this LED shines light it's going to bounce off this white tipped plunger and then hit the CDS cell. Uh, the CDS cell changes in resistance based upon how much light is hitting it. So the idea is when you move the plunger um, further away, then less light will be hitting the CDS cell. Um, as a result, you will be getting a less voltage reading on the Arduino, and you can code in a measurement that gives you the distance in millimeters. So this is the original model created by Dr. Reed. He utilized a clear tubing and wrapped it in construction paper to prevent light from entering. He used a CDSO and an LED with a simple voltage divider to an analog in to an Arduino. Also he experimented with a solenoid engine here and if you want to learn more about it there's a link in the video description. So this is the 3D printed prototype that was all done from the CAT model shown before. This is the tubing that was printed from black PLA. It has a plunger with aluminum foil on the end. It moves and extends to a maximum length and contracts. The next piece is the holster, which holds the LED and the CDS cell inside. Uh, the wires come out like this, which can easily be placed into a breadboard or a PCB. These are the two mounts which hold the tubing stable since it's circular. For size comparison, here's a quarter um, the tubing itself is a little bit smaller than the quarter, but I would say it's about the same size. This is a smaller version of the optical linear sensor. It has the diameter of about a dime, shown here. Uh, the plunger and the holster are scaled down versions of the ones shown below. It works the same way besides the data points since the diameter of the tube is smaller the light will bounce differently inside so you have to take different measurements. So the setup is pretty simple here. We have this red board which is Arduino compatible microcontroller. Uh, there's a simple voltage divider here for the CDS cell and there's an analog read function in the code that reads from the analog A0 pin and it is communicated through serial output. So as you can see from the monitor as you pull the plunger out the distance increases slowly. The analog read value is the raw value that the microcontroller gets and through testing and analysis we've coded in a linear interpolation in the Arduino code so it outputs the distance in millimeters. So here we're going to show a side-by-side -side comparison of the real world versus the calculated version on the monitor. We're going to start off at 30 millimeters and slowly make our way up. As you can see, when we move the plunger, the displayed value increases proportionally. And when we go to 50 millimeters, it reads 52. When we go to about 60, we get 61. When we get around the 70 range, we're getting 72 and when we go to the 8, we're getting about 82. So the calibration on this all depends upon the testing done beforehand. 
So this is the Arduino code that Dr. Reed and I developed. And on the right side, this is the Excel sheet detailing the distance measurements versus the analog read values that that red board received from the analog input channel. This is a plot done uh, based off of the analog read versus distance. Uh, since it's not a perfect linear regression or a powered regression, what Dr. Reed and I decided to do was do a linear interpolation in between each of these values. So in between each of these dots would be a line and based on the analog read value and where it is, it would read the corresponding distance uh, proportionally in between those values. So let's go on to the code. Uh, this struct allows us to group the digital input and distance in millimeters found on this Excel sheet together. This struct M over here is just these table values imported into the Arduino code. Uh, there is initializing of variables. The setup is the basic serial.begin. Uh, this loop allows us to read the analog zero pin at every one second. Uh, it also calls the function get distance from voltage reading, which actually allows us to do the linear interpolation. So in this get distance from voltage reading, uh, we are past the int r, which corresponds to the analog read that we get from the Arduino. From there, we check if r is greater than 1000, which means that the CDSO is actually receiving maximum light. Um, that actually corresponds to the minimum distance of 1, so we return 1 here. Uh, from there, we find from the struct uh, listed above the upper bound and lower bound, so we can use those values for the linear regression. Uh, we find the multiplier of where specifically that point is located proportionally to the analog read values, and then we multiply that by the lower bound and add it. Then we return that value and serial print it out. All of the CAD files, code, and other information about the project can be found in the GitHub repository on the screen and in the video description below. And now some words from Dr. Reed to explain the applications of the project. Hi, welcome. This is some uh, footage shot about the GLUS controller, which uses linear sensors. This is a commercially available linear potentiometer. It's a slide potentiometer, which is capable of varying its resistance based on the position of this slider. And when encased in 3D printed parts, as we have here in the GLUS controller, as you can see, you can move it in and out to make a linear sensor, which has, uh, which is, uh, has a travel, which is similar to the travel of the slide potentiometer. This strange looking prototype, uh, which has kind of a rat's nest of wires, um, exists to be a controller for a robot of a similar shape. And it would be much nicer if we could make these components a little bit smaller. However, the commercially available slide potentiometers like this one do not come in all possible sizes. That's one of the motivations for us developing our own linear sensor. Also, um, although these are very reliable and robust components, they do eventually wear out as you slide them. Um, it might take thousands of motions for them to loosen up or become uncalibrated, but that does happen. Um, and, but more, the biggest issue is we would like to be able to control the size, and as already this takes two hands to hold, I would like to be able to take a 7 tetrahedra version, which is the size of my, my robot, um, and be able to hold it within two hands. So it'd be nice to make something half this size or maybe even uh, a tenth of this size. And that's what the work that Keyshawn and I have done using the light-based sensors. Since the foundation and proof of concept of the sensor has been done, improvements can now be made to the design. It could be adapted to use on the Gluscon as shown previously. The footprint of the sensor could be made smaller by the use of fiber optic cable and the replacement for the CDSO could be found since it has the chemical cadmium in it. There could be many more improvements for the sensor and many applications can benefit by implementing it. Thanks for watching.